Okay, welcome to um, some YouTube videos for the course ENG 460. And um, let's see, we're going to be using a tool in lab, and the tool is called QT SPIM, and I actually have it running right here. So if we go to help um, about QT SPIM, uh, notice I'm using version 9.1.7, February 2012. SPIM is a simulator of MIPS. R3000 processor. So if you look at the word SPIM, that's kind of MIPS spelled backward. Hmm. Interesting. All right, so SPIM is distributed under the BSD license, and you can get it at SourceForge.net. So you probably want to download that and put it on your personal PC because then uh, you know you can do your labs at home or you do you know the experiment with this wherever you go. But we will primarily be using this in lab. We'll probably do a little VHDL too, but mostly QT SPIM to start off the course. All right, so let me close that, and then let's just take a look. You got file, simulator, registers, text segment, data segment, window, help. Well, let's go through these. You know, the file's basically going to allow you to load assembly files that we'll, uh, we'll take and look at, because we have to understand the, in the, the uh, instruction set architecture before we can design a processor. Now, this guy right here is kind of nice. It actually reinitializes the processor and loads a file. So you might want to use that quite a bit, because a lot of times you'll, you know, as you're learning to write code, you'll get the processor in a screwy state, and uh, you'll need to reinitialize it. Okay, now, now, it's actually a simulator of a processor, okay? So here's a, a simulator. You can clear your registers. You know, all processors have registers. Uh, you can reinitialize the simulator with, to its default values without actually um, loading a file. And then you've got some run parameters. And then, uh, of course, you can run pause stop. Run parameters actually tells you where in memory your program's going to start. So it's going to go to the location 0040 quad 0 look at that memory location and start trying to execute code at that location. Now you can go on the registry and change this, but let's just keep it at uh, 0040 quad 0 so everybody's on the same page. But that's where our program is going to reside in memory. And let's see what else. Um, yeah, we can, uh, but we'll play more with this display symbols and settings. Now here's set, let's go to settings. Settings has two tabs, uh, QT spam and MIPS. So let's go to QT spam. Now notice in mine, I've actually got the font, for example, on the register and the text and data windows. I got that guy set to 14 point. Well, that's because I'm making um, videos. So you can change the font however you want to make it look, uh, you know, to something that looks good to you. And then over in the MIPS, there's at this point in the course, there's only two things you really need to be concerned with. Except pseudo instructions, which you want to do. And we'll talk about what those are later. And then you might have load exception handler um, checked. At this point in the course, uncheck that guy because that'll cause some problems. And then in class, I'll have a chance to tell you more about what that's all about and then how to avoid the problems. But initially, just uncheck it and you can avoid all the problems. All right. And let's see. That takes us through the simulator. What about registers? Oh, okay. Yeah, let's, um, before we do that, let's go look at uh, the window. Now notice, under the window menu, I have integer register, registers, floating point registers, text, and data, and console. Okay? Now if I turn all these guys off, I'm not going to have anything here. All right? Now, integer registers, okay, each processor has some registers. Uh, here's register 0 all the way down to register 31. And they have names, S's and T's and A's and V's, and we'll learn all what, what that means later. Um, I can also turn on my uh, floating point registers. Well, you know, this guy can do floating point calculations. I've got some single precision registers, and I've got some uh, double precision registers. All right. Then uh, you can also turn on the text segment. Well, what does text mean? Text is your actual code, you know, the program you write. Text, that's the program you write, and that resides in memory. Over here on the left, um, well, not highlight all of them, these are your memory locations. So this program is residing, it's starting off at 0040 quad 0. And that's a user program. And then the operating system actually has some code, and it's at 8000 uh, 0180. Okay, so text is your program, just a program. You, know, you take a C course, you write a C program. Well, that's called text when we talk about processors and assembly. Okay. Um, data segment. All right, so you got a text segment and a data segment. That brings up another tab here. Well, the data segment is the data you're going to operate on. So in memory, you have code and you also have data. The code operates on the data and does something useful. Okay. What else do we have under window? We have console. 
All right, so there's this thing called the console right there. Well, we can actually do some I.O. We can print to the console and read from the console, and that'll be nice because that'll help us debug, all right? So uh, let's see, if we look at the data segment, I mean, let me turn that guy back on. Then I can go over to my data segment uh, menu item and look at that guy, all right? So I've turned on my data segment in my window menu. Now I can go to the data segment and says it, it says, well, I'll show you user data. I'll show you user stack. Well, the user has a stack. He can push and pop things on the stack. The kernel data, which is the OS. So you can turn these on or off. Notice the user data is right here in front of me. Let's turn that off. Boom, user data just disappeared. Let's turn off the user stack. Oh, user stack just disappeared. And the kernel data. Oh, I've basically turned everything off in my data segment. Well, we don't want to do that. Let's put it all back in there because we'll want to see that. So now I've got my I got my user data. I got my user stack, and then I got the kernel. Okay. Right. And then on the left is the memory location, and then the right is the data that's actually at that memory location. And then on the far right here, what that is, it says, well, take these, uh, this byte and interpret it as ASCII. And then it'll put out the ASCII character. But you see a lot of dots here? Well, that means some of those bytes don't have a printable ASCII character. All right. I'll see more about that. So at this point, you know, we just kind of have created a window. And the four tabs we're going to want are data, text, floating point, and integer registers. So let's do one more thing. Integer registers. Notice status. The status register is equal to 3000 FF10. That's a hexadecimal value. Well, I can go up here to registers and change that to binary. And there you go. There was my three. It, it, it didn't put in the leading zeros. And then it had what, uh, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, all that good stuff. Uh, let's see, what are the last four digits? There's zeros. And then the last four here is our one. And then that is uh, what? An F. So we should have F10. Let's go back to hex. And yeah, we have F10. Then what's that in decimal? Well, that's, um, what is that? That's 805,371,664. Well, the one you really want to work with is hex. All right, so notice. Now I'll put an X in front of my stuff in class, but there's no X here. But those are hexadecimal. And uh, it's a 32-bit quantity, so we should have eight hex digits. And we do. All right, eight hex digits, 32 bits. All right, so that's QT SPIM. Um, first thing, find that guy on the web, download it on the PC, and take it for a test drive. And um, we'll see you in the next video. Thanks, and goodbye.